From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. My, what a program we have for you today. We're talking about things that are very eye-opening and enlightening. This first one, Pope Francis, last Pope before Christ's return? That is quite a question, isn't it? And we're going to discuss that at length. And then again, the global war on Christians. Have you heard about that? We're not hearing much about that here in the United States, but it is global, and we will draw your attention to it and why. And then going on, the Pope says authentic Islam opposes violence. Are you kidding? We're going to discuss that at length, believe me. But before we get into the program, could I just say thank you? Thank you so very much for all of your cards, letters, and your prayers. I'm feeling a lot better. I did uh, fracture my arm, and it is healing, but it's going to take several weeks. And uh, I slipped on the ice, but thank the Lord I didn't break my back or something. The Lord is in control, and thank you for your prayers. And I would like to just say that um, Jack received a lot of cards this week also for his birthday. And uh, Jack, I'm not going to tell how old you are. You look too good. <laughs> there you go. I took Charles Atlas weightlifting <laughs> course. And I'm like President Reagan, who said it is the 45th anniversary of my 39th birthday. <laughs> oh, I didn't say it about myself. I'm talking about my <laughs> partner, Chuck Oman, Dr. Chuck Oman, my announcer. I'm always thrilled because he's so much older than I am. <laughs> Thanks for the happy birthday cards, folks. Yes, you read them all too, Jack. Oh, I Hundreds would, and hundreds yeah, of yeah. them. He reads every single one of them. I just want to say that um, I was greatly surprised at the first uh, headlines that I'm going to show you right now. But after 1993, we saw three popes. I'd like for you to see this first uh, cover, please, from the Vatican. There they are. Since 1993, we've followed these three popes, Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, and now Pope Francis. Going on here, Pope Francis, last pope before Christ return? Now, that's a very good question, and it's very much in line. I want you to see some dates here, because these are Roman Catholic dates. Celestine II, and we're going to file right through these, and you will see how quickly they go. From Celestine II right up until Pope Francis. And I'm also going to put on two, two dates here. Celestine II, which was 1143 to 43, and now Pope Francis, that is the present Pope. Jack, I would really appreciate it if you would draw our attention to the significance of all of these dates. I will, Rex. But first of all, let me tell you, we're going to say some strong things today about Pope Francis, but I'm using Catholic leaders to do it. I will say nothing, but I will show you from the scriptures who's right and who's wrong. Now, there had been 162 popes near that figure by the time Celestine II came into office. And since then, there has been a tremendous prophecy made by Father McGrair of Ireland, who became the bishop of that nation. And when he was in Rome, he had this vision of the final 113 popes. And he gave all of the descriptions, and he was right on. And he said, number 113 will be the pope who lives at the return of Christ to set up his kingdom on earth, and during the Battle of Armageddon, which precedes his return to come and stop at Revelation 11, 18, and the Pope who will bring down Catholicism. And a lot of people are wondering now, I just got the Vatican magazine. I had to change everything I'm going to do for next week because there are many letters of discontent from Roman Catholic peoples now because of what he's saying and doing. Rexella, let me fit, finish this now. Even if you don't believe those dates, the men I'm about to quote, they're shocking. 
is Francis of Assisi, Bishop Sheen, Pope John Paul II, Benedict XVI, and next week, Malachi Martin, the great Jesuit teacher at the Vatican Institute, who left the movement because he says, I'll not be a Jesuit priest because the Jesuits turned to communism and I will not be a Marxist communist priest. That's next week. All right. What about this teaching? If you don't believe everything else, believe the Bible. Even the Catholic Catechism talks about the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they believe it soon in this prophecy, when this particular number 113th Pope comes to power, and that is Francis. Now, first of all, the Bible teaches he reigns during Armageddon, and that's Revelation 16:16. 16, 16. As described in Revelation 9, verses 14 to 18, loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. And the number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was the third part of men killed fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. Ladies and gentlemen, never in the history of um, the world have we seen anything like what we're getting ready for the greatest war in history. And Russia will be there, Ezekiel 38 and 39. China will be there, Revelation 16, 12. And is the one that leads this horrendous battle I just mentioned at the Euphrates River, where ISIS is now battling. Then the Bible speaks about a great Muslim grouping coming together with Russia and China. And that, of course, is Daniel 11:40, Isaiah 17, 1. Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm chapter 83, verses 5 to 7. But in verse 4, it tells why they're coming. Let us cast Israel off from being a nation, that their name be no more in remembrance. A great anti-Semitic move. How Satan has fought against these dear people. And that's what 1 Chronicles 21 1 says. Satan fought against the Jew. Israel. And some of you Jew haters out there call yourselves Christians. You better get a de second dose and really get to know the Lord as Savior. But let me say this right now. We have Catholic leaders like Bishop Dougherty who taught the rapture and Fathers Tumblr and Funk put out a tremendous book on how he's going to say, come up hither, Revelation 4.1, and it will go up in the twinkling of an eye. That's 1 Corinthians 15.52. Then all those evacuated saints return with Jesus to set up his kingdom on earth. The Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, Jude verse 14. And Revelation 1, 7 says, Christ comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. These are the raptured ones coming back with him, I just mentioned. And then, of course, the armies in heaven follow him. As he comes on that white horse in Revelation 19, 11, there are the armies, verse 14. He comes to rule and reign for a thousand years, and then he's recommissioned, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, and he reigns here forever and forever and forever because for excel of the world will never end, Isaiah 45, 17, and Ephesians 3, 21. Oh, and Jack. it's all here, yes, yes. and it would be when this pope rules. But then there's some sad reports there. He's going to bring down much of the doctrine of the Catholic Church and you'll hear if you don't believe in these numbers for 113 being the Pope that does listen to the voices that are yeah. coming up yes Jack there are four leaders that I'm going to refer to right now who talk about what will happen when this Pope is in office 113 okay take a look at this first one he took his name from uh, this uh, particular saint saint francis of assisi and this is what he had to say some priests will keep silent about the truth and others will trample it underfoot and deny it sanctity of life will be held in derision can't you see that we see it all around us even by those who outwardly profess it for in those days jesus christ will send them not a true pastor but a destroyer. Excel of the sanctity of life, there yes. is a, the abortion message, and the church is starting to phase out on this. Watch out. We're going to go on with another uh, one who makes a great statement about 113, and this is Bishop Sheen. Now, Jack, maybe you'd like to read what he had to oh, say. Oh, this is dynamite. The false prophet will have a religion without a cross, a religion without a world to come, a religion to destroy religions. 
There will be a counterfeit church. Christ's church will be one, and the false prophet will create the other. The false church will be worldly, ecumenical, and global. It will be a loose federation of churches and religions forming some type of global association, a world parliament of churches. It will be emptied of all divine content, and it will be the mystical body of the Antichrist. The mystical body on earth at that day will have its Judas Iscariot, and he will be the false prophet. Satan will recruit him from among our bishops. Ladies and gentlemen, let me comment about that for a moment. The Bible teaches just that, that the Antichrist is coming to power. There's going to be a one world government and one world religion. As Revelation 13, 1, this is the Antichrist rising in verse 1. He has control over all kindreds tongues, people, and nations, and all the world worships him in verse 8. But then in verses 11 to the end of that chapter, you have this one called the false prophet who creates an image toward this Antichrist for worship of him and promotes it. And here's the problem. Who is he? A Muslim? No. He has the two horns of a lamb. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. John 1 29. So he's associated with Christianity. And he speaks like a dragon. He's dangerous. Revelation 20, verse 2. It's coming. Mm, Jack, it's co isn't that something how that's all coming together? Yeah. It amazes me. We're going to go on now with the Pope that served longer than any other Pope in the 20th century. And of course, that was Pope John Paul II. And take a look at what he had to say. The prophecy of St. Malachi is shocking, and Pope John Paul II believed what was said. Pope John Paul II knew from the day he became Pope about the apostate defection that was coming, and he knew what the second secret of Fatima was, that there would be this great apostatizing among the clergy, bishops, cardinals, and so forth, because Pope John Paul II figured that the prophecy would be true. He did everything possible to keep it from happening in the next choosing of a pope when the white smoke would flow. But he warned them, Jack. He, he said, said, watch I want to get out. In as many as I can of men who believe like I do, the true word of God. And he trusted Benedict because he was his right hand man. And he saw that he got in. All right, I'm going to go on with Pope Benedict. And of course, we all know that he was uh, very influential in the Catholic Church, along with being a pope. And going on here, you see his picture and what he had to say. Pope Benedict the 16th stated, Long ago, when I was a cardinal, I realized that the role of the Holy Spirit in the conclave is to prevent us from electing a pope who will completely destroy the church. Let me add and, it, Rex. Yes, you go right ahead. And ladies and gentlemen, this man really knew his Bible. I admire him. He is the editor who redid the new catechism. And Rexella... We're going to show the people how he quoted all of the verses about the return of Christ, the earth, the set of his kingdom. And he also said, and it was in the newspapers, I am asking you cardinals to pray like you've never prayed because there is one among us who may become the one who destroys the church. Keep listening, folks. And that prophecy was at 113 from yes. Celestine yes. II. And then going on, USA Today gave a statement, and I have to admit it. I almost cried. It really hurt me. It shocked me because it stated that the most hated religion in the world, hated religion in the world is Christianity. The war on Christians from Africa, Asia to the Middle East, they're the world's most persecuted religious group. You know, I ask our director, Jerry, why? The Christians don't go around killing people. They go around feeding them, helping them. And then let's take a look at this. Catholicism is under assault by the forces of jihadist Islam in a band of confrontation that runs across the globe from the west coast of Senegal to the Eastern Islands, on Indonesia. Now, <laughs> top 50 list of Christian persecutors. My, oh my. 50 nations. 50 of them, yes. Now, we were all so hurt 
I want to cry again. The militants slayed the Jordanian pilot, and Obama and King Abdullah vowed to retaliate because this video showed the captive burned alive. Oh, my, oh, my, burned alive. I'm going to go to Jack right now. Isn't your heart moved, friends? How can they do this? It's not even human for me to uh, imagine this, Jack. I'm sorry, Pope Francis, when you say that the authentic ones are not that way. If you're following the Quran, you are 273 texts, sirs, verses. Let's see, we're to kill. 164 says, holy jihad, killing to take over the world. That's their goal. You're going to be seeing this in the next two weeks. 109 times they kill either by crucifixion, and that is Surah 533, or by beheading, and that is Surah 47.4. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in trouble. Do you know that the Christian encyclopedia of the world says they have killed 14 Five million Christians since the day of Henry Ford till now. Oh, this is a religion of peace. Really? Jesus predicted this would come in Matthew 24, verse 9. He said, You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. John 16, 2, Whosoever kills you will think he's doing God a service. Why? Because they hate the cross of Jesus. Islam hates the cross. They started smashing every cross way back in the history of their religion. And it goes on today. And ladies and gentlemen, you know why? 1 Corinthians 1.18, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. And the Bible says in Galatians 6.12, there would be persecution for the cross. But Paul didn't care, even though they finally beheaded him. And he could say before that hour, he said, I glory in the cross of Christ, Galatians 6, 14. You're going to see some terrible things coming. This is the Pope that leaves during that tribulation hour. This is the tribulation hour. And here's what's going on in Revelation 6, 9. He said, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were persecuted, that died, were slain. For the testimony of Jesus. In Revelation 20, verse 4 says, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Jack, uh, this next article really shocked me, and it is from The Telegraph. Please take a look at this. Pope Francis reaches out to atheists and agnostics, and he says, God forgives those who obey their what? conscience. He wrote in the unprecedented letter the latest example of the markedly different tone and style from his predecessors that he has set since being elected in that March election. Now, Jack, I'm going to stop here because I, I'd like you to elaborate on that. Can we get to heaven if we follow our conscience? Four hundred times this book, the Holy Bible, the Reims Doyé version of the Catholic Church and the King James version of the Protestants, says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Psalm 14, verse 1, and chapter 53, verse 1. And you can't get there by works, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. It's through the blood of Jesus. Even 50% of the evangelicals now say there are many ways to heaven. You're going to find out you're not going to end up there. You cannot get to heaven without Jesus. I repeat, 400 times it says so. You die in your sins if you don't believe in me, John 8, 24. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. But secondly, you say now, Pope Francis, by conscience. Conscience is like a rubber band. You can stretch it all over. And Titus 1.15 says, Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are unbelieving, even their mind and their conscience is defiled and corrupt. I believe God. Let God be true. And every man a liar. Oh. Romans 3.4. You know, Jack, uh, from a little girl, my mom taught me in the beginning, 
God created heaven and earth. Take a look at this next headline, if you will, please. Pope Francis, Big Bang doesn't contradict creation. I'm sorry, that does contradict. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. It didn't come with Big Bang, did it, Jack? No, and guess what? In our version, it's Elohim created. Why? His name is Yahweh, and the second member is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Blessed Holy Spirit's name is the Paraclete. But he uses Elohim because it means more than one. Jesus helped create the world. Hey, Old Testament before he came to earth, he always was. Proverbs 30, verse 4, who hath established all the ends of the earth? What's God's name? What's his son's name? The Holy Spirit. And this is Psalm 104, verse 30. He sent forth his spirit and they created. They! How do we know? Genesis 126, the human race, let us create man in our image. That says enough, doesn't it? But here's more. You say, how come you say he was here before this world was created? Because the Bible says so. 1 Peter 1.20, he was foreordained before the foundation of the world. He existed from old Micah 5.2, and it says the one that existed at that time, before the world was formed, would come to Bethlehem to be born, and he was... Matthew 2.11. Not only that, but Colossians 1.16 says, For by Christ were all things created that are in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones, dominions, principalities, parties, all things were created by Christ and for Christ. No doubt about it. And Rexella, let's move on. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be talking about something that came out in uh, the Christian today. And take a look, please. It is Franklin Graham, the son of Dr. Billy Graham. This is what he has to say. Islam is a religion of war. And he backs it up, of course, with the Quran. I'd like for you to see what is in the Quran that backs that up. Seize them and kill them. Wherever you find them, Surah 489. If you encounter in war those who disbelieve, strike their necks, behead them, Surah 7-4. And when you encounter the infidels, strike off their heads, Surah 47-4. That doesn't sound like religion Rick's of Ella. peace to me. 109 times it talks about that, and 164 times, I repeat, it talks about holy jihad, war, kill. You know, Jack, in the light of what you just said, I can't believe what the Pope said. Take a look, please. Authenticism opposes violence. Now, you know, friends, when Christianity worldwide is under siege, how can he say this? Jack, give me an answer for this, if you will, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Pope Benedict is under a fatwa, a death threat, because he said something that happened 700 years ago, quoting an historian about the danger of Islam and they've got this death threat on him and he's sitting in a monastery now. And they made a deal with Pope Francis and I want you to put it on the screen. This is shocking as I read it to you. Pope urged to declare Islam a peaceful religion. What? June 11, 2013. Seven years after the Sunnis, Islam's foremost institution severed dialogue with the Vatican over remarks by Pope Benedict XVI. The Cairo-based Al-Azhar wants the new pontiff to open the door to resuming interfaith discourse by declaring Islam to be a peaceful religion. He said, if you call this a peaceful religion and bring it to the eyes of the world, we will be with you. And he said that in the great speech, Evangelii Gaudium. God forgiven. Mm. You know, Jack, we all know that the Bible predicted this before it would happen. That just before the coming of the Lord, all of this would happen. We know that Jesus is coming again. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, the one who wants to come into your heart and be your Savior. Will you open your heart to the Lord and be ready for the day that Jesus returns? Jack, we pray that wonderful prayer of acceptance. Oh, 400 times she says in this book, Jesus is the only way, only way. Father, thank you for sending Jesus into the world to fulfill what you promised would happen before he even came to earth. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world and he sent his son to be the savior for you. He shed that precious blood for you. There is no other way to be saved without shedding of blood. There's no remission of sin. But he said, I'm sending him. And if it were only you on this earth, he would have done it. 
Now all he asks is that you say, Jesus, I receive what you did. I receive you. Jesus, come into my heart now. In your holy name, I pray this. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? If you did, there's my address. Let me know, will you please? You just became a child of God because Jesus is in your heart. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. You'll be walking with the Savior of the world. And now, whoa, take a look, please, at the promo of our wonderful offer of the week. Beware false prophets. Take a look. Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies and doctrines of demons are the final signs and dangers facing Christianity in the 21st century. The Bible warns that ministers will arise who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them apostates, antichrists, and super deceivers, like Judas who for the almighty dollar delivered Christ to the enemies of the gospel. That hour has arrived. Bible translators remove 91 verses claiming Christ is the Son of God from the Holy Bible for decadent versions created for Muslims. Does it matter? Shockingly so. Why? Christianity's foundation and major theological points have been destroyed by what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. This same group of blasphemers have obliterated the major Bible doctrines for salvation, including the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, his sacrificial blood atonement, his bodily resurrection, and his second coming. Who are these Judas Iscariots? Have they committed the unpardonable sin against Christ and the Holy Spirit? Order Dr. Van Empey's shocking video, Beware False Prophets, Damnable Heresies and Doctrines of Demons, and find out. If ever you needed to order something that we're offering, you need to have this because those false prophets are out there and we tell you who they are. So there's the 800 number and there's the address. Make the call right now. And, you know, friends, here is our wonderful announcer to tell you exactly how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend to order, beware, false prophets. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Oh, if ever you needed a video, you need this one. There's the 800 number, there's the address, so please make the call. All the false prophets are on here. You need to know who they are. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. Exercise daily. Walk with the Lord. How true. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.